Welcome. In front of me is a Samsung Galaxy Fold, and today I'll show you how to go through the setup process of the device. So when you put it up for the first time, you'll be presented with this well, welcoming screen. And for me, at the moment, it's in a different language, so let's start off by choosing English. There we go. Okay. And automatically changes. Uh, and before I actually progress, I'm gonna mute this, because I don't really feel like listening to the voices there. Um, then you have connect to mobile network, and this will only work if you actually put in a SIM card, which I did not, so it doesn't really matter here. Uh, but you will be able to connect to the, your well, SIM card mobile network. Uh, so let's tap on next, uh, check out some of the uh, info to get started. Um, so basically we do need to select this here, uh, and user li license agreement, sign away your soul, and proceed on. From here, uh, connect to Wi-Fi. This step is completely optional. Uh, you can connect to it and the only thing it will add is for you to be able to log into Samsung account and Google account. Uh, Google account might be useful, but I can do that later. Samsung account, uh, personally, I don't like. I don't really care about their uh, apps and uh, intrusive way of uh, basically trying to jam that down your throat. So I'm gonna skip this for now and just later on do that, all that stuff. And you have copy data. Uh, this will allow you to back up your older device and move everything from it to, to this device that includes your photos, contacts, um, all the apps that you have on there, music, whatever it is, will be here. Now, depending on how much stuff you actually have on that older device uh, will determine how long this will be going for. Uh, and all you really need to do is tap on next and proceed with the guide that will provide you with how to do it. Uh, but I'm setting up as new, I don't really have anything to copy, so I'm going to choose don't copy and that's going to set it up as new. Then you have date and time. Uh, as you can see, um, it chooses the uh, time zone uh, correctly, at least for me. Um, the day, is it the 20th? I don't think so. And most certainly it isn't. Um, yeah, it's most certainly not correct. But if I were to connect to Wi-Fi, uh, it would then gather the information from a network and I don't really need to bother with this, it's going to be set up automatically later on. Uh, if you want to, if you're not planning to connect to any kind of Wi-Fi or stuff like that, you can set it up just by tapping on it and choosing your time. Let's tap on next, then you have additional Google services. So you have um, use location, uh, allow scanning, basically ways for Google to know exactly where you are. Um, and also it's used by additional apps like uh, Google Maps, so if you want to have accurate GPS localization and well, accurate routes, um, this will be required to be enabled, but when you're trying to open up Google Maps, for instance, it will tell you to enable that and you can just confirm it. Uh, and then you have also some uh, send user and diagnostic data. Um, so it just give, basically gathers data on how the device is being used and gives it to, uh, to Google so they can quotation mark improve it. Then let's tap on accept and once you have either disabled or left it enabled there. And next page you will see is the protect your phone, which allows you to add a protection. Now you can have a maximum of three. That includes face recognition, fingerprint, and one of those three here. So pin, pattern, or password. Um, now when you're choosing a pin, pattern, or password, uh, or when you're choosing a fingerprint, let's put it this way, fingerprint or face recognition, one of those two, if you choose it, you will be required to set an additional way of unlocking and you'll have choice between pattern, pin or password. Um, but it doesn't go the other way around. So if you go with, for instance, pattern, like I will right now, I'm not required to set anything else apart from that. So keep in mind that when you're trying to set up face or finger, uh, you will have additional ways of actually you remembering it. And for some majestic reason, apparently Samsung still tries to jam it down your throat to log into their services, even though it doesn't have Wi-Fi. So no way of, of actually validating your account. So I'm gonna skip this. Uh, and it gives you also, again, skip out on all this. Um, not like they have much. Galaxy Store isn't better than uh, Play Store. I'm not a fan of it. Uh, then you have Galaxy Themes. Uh, Sure, I guess that's a way of customizing your phone. Kind of crappy that it's locked behind it up. And then you have stuff like Bixby that no one cares and additional stuff. So I just skipped that. 
Welcome to your Galaxy Fold. Let's tap on next. Um, so start small, go big. I guess uh, if you're not competent enough to figure out that it's openable, uh, they give you an animation and also on how to use split screen. Uh, so let's tap on next. Uh, and then you have before you get started. So your Galaxy Fold includes a special protective layer on the main screen. Uh, indeed it does. Um, it's not very visible at the moment, but previous previous uh, iteration of the device um, had it visible as though it was you could kind of peel it off basically. Uh, nowadays it's not like that. And here you also have basically uh, do's and don'ts or well don'ts uh, that you can do with this device. So uh, for instance, avoid pressing hard on the screen, tap lightly to keep it safe. Um, I think that applies to basically anything that is fragile, babies, uh, displays. Um, so yeah, uh, just don't try to jam screwdrivers into it if that, that's what they're saying. Um, but in case of this display, also don't jam your fingernails because they're strong enough to uh, to embed it into the plastic display. Uh, then what else we have? Uh, when you fold, uh, fold the phone, make sure there is nothing inside, such as cards, coins, don't, uh, or keys, uh, which could damage the main screen. Um, if it's closed, the main screen is on the front, which is glass, but um, the way they mean it, don't put anything in there. Uh, anything can damage it, um, including your fingernail. Um, then your Galaxy Fold isn't water or well, isn't water or dust resistant. Don't allow any liquid or small particles to enter it. Yes, I love that my $2,000 phone isn't waterproof uh, because that's exactly how are my devices, even more fragile. Um, so you can't really do anything with it. Uh, all the other Galaxy devices are waterproof, this one hasn't. Um, do not attach anything to the main screen, such as screen protectors. Um, this is particularly interesting. Don't protect your screen. It's fragile. We know it. You can't protect it. Thumbs up. Uh, keep your Galaxy Fold away from credit cards. Uh, that's kind of weird. Um, medical devices and other objects that can be affected by magnets. I believe this is um, this is actually to keep uh, the other devices safe actually because the device itself has magnets to keep it shut and this is to for it to actually not damage the uh, the device itself uh, not this one but the other ones like medical equipment or your card uh, when you put the card for instance to pay it uh, wirelessly just by tapping it uh, it might actually uh, mess mess with it and you might not be able to pay with it uh, if it's uh, somehow magnetized or something like that but yeah uh, cool we got we read all of that let's stop on done and we can start using the display uh, basically gently touching it like it's a uh, like it's a really fragile baby okay so this will conclude the setup process of the phone and if you found this very helpful don't forget to hit like subscribe and thanks for watching